whole thing was, from beginning to end, has been around inspiration. The message of the book is universal. So you give a child a book that illustrates a message, but does not give that child the word for the message. So that child can actually tell you. What's Up With Yuck is a wordless art book that shows in a very entertaining and engaging way how the simple choices that we make can change the direction of our day and ultimately the direction of our lives. To learn more, we sat down with the creators of What's Up With Yuck. Nanette Nokum is a financial advisor who wanted to help children think about making good choices. Where did this whole idea come from? It was actually strange. The uh, summer of 2009, I had this idea about illustrating choices. I was mostly concerned about children who grow up without the guidance of an adult or a parent and that they are not able to get the training or the guidance to make choices that then influence their lives later on. And it just stuck in my head and I couldn't get it out. And then I was thinking about a way to illustrate the choices that people make in a different way besides saying you made a bad choice or a good choice. And then I thought about ions. You know, in chemistry, I learned about positive and negative charges with ions. And I thought, well, what if I used ions as a way to illustrate positive and negative choices? And so I just kept thinking about this. And Carl, my husband, would say, stop talking about it because you're not making sense. <laughs> Luckily, at the same time, we got um, from John Kastner, his portfolio in the mail. So it was just serendipity. <laughs> it was, it was. And I saw it and I thought, wow, I wonder if he could illustrate my ideas. So at least I could get it out of my head because it was in a way driving me crazy because I'd come home from uh, work and I'd think about it. And like, why is this in my head? <laughs> so, so then I met with John and told him about it. But that's really how it started. I just couldn't get it out of my head. And I would ask people about ions. What do you think about ions? Well, uh, positive and negative, great, great. But then others didn't recognize ions. But So I was just finding a way to unload the ideas from my mind. And then it was wonderful that, I, like I said, I got the illustrations from John of his work. And I thought, perfect, I want to talk to him. Now, you mentioned you came home from, from work with these ideas. I have to ask if your day job or your career has anything to do with thinking about choices people make in general. I'm a financial advisor, been so for um, more than 25 years. Love what I do, and part of my work is talking to people about um, their goals, their dreams, what um, choices they would have to make in order to make their goals a reality. So it's really connected to it, but when it came to mind, it really wasn't the reason why I was thinking about it. I was really thinking about young kids who might need some help, because I think that when we train our minds to make choices and think about consequences as adults, it's easier and more natural. It's harder to tra retrain our minds, but if we start with a good foundation, then it's easier. Now, I don't have a background in psychology, but I thought, well, this is kind of, uh, it's kind of obvious, and I think um, many people would relate to it. And the idea for telling the story completely in pictures, did that come from, uh, how did you work with John? Did that idea for, here's what this picture should be? Did you describe in detail, I want this happening and this happening? And he came up with an imaginative way to illustrate that? Or how did that process work with what's going on in the picture? When, when I first met with John, I really didn't know what I wanted except the idea of ions. I said, well, help me illustrate ions about positive and negative choices. And uh, I talked about you know, um, that my idea was to create a book whereby I could give a book away for everyone that I sell, not knowing the content, all of it at that time. I wanted to give books away to children who would need help that may not be able to buy the book. So I liked the idea of one for one, which was uh, from the I, I got that from Tom Shoes, you know, they give away a shoe for um, every shoe that they sell, which they've given away 84,000 shoes all over the world to people, for, to kids who don't have shoes. And I thought, well, how wonderful is that? Nanette made one important choice for this project. For every copy of the book sold, she donates another copy to a library or community organization. 
and I really want to give the book away. That to me is a model that's so important to this project. It's not, I mean, I love my day job. I'm a financial advisor. I love what I do. I'm blessed that my business has been very successful. I want to continue doing that. But I just needed to continue with this thought and have it uh, for others. And it, it would be accomplishing my goal for the book if one or two kids said, you know, stopped and thought about their choices before they took action that they would regret. So to me, if I impacted one or two kids' lives, I, I'm just grateful for that. And I actually also established a little uh, foundation through the Rochester Area Community Foundation, a little fund, and it's called Arts in Education. So whatever comes out of ancillary uh, um, revenue from the book will be able to fund that, which um, then it would promote other projects besides just the book. So there might be some other creative ways of helping kids uh, come up with ways to think about their choices and feel responsible for their choices. John Kastner is the illustrator whose distinctive style has graced toys, games, books, clothing, and magazines, as well as fine art, prints, and public spaces for more than 30 years. John, tell us about uh, how you came to this project. What were your first thoughts when Nanette first approached you for this book? Um, well, I, I had set, uh, sent um, uh, Nanette and Carl a package uh, in, in the mail. Uh, they had bought work for me before, and I was looking for work, and I thought they might like to see my current sketchbooks. And uh, that ignited something in uh, Nanette's mind. Um, uh, uh, and I, she was, it was kind of vague initially until, uh, until our, our first meeting. And um, I didn't have a lot of thoughts. I sort of listened to her talk. And uh, she was talking about uh, about ions and about uh, um, a book on choices, and um, that's uh, so she got the ball, the thought ball rolling, and um, gave me an assignment which I thought was going to be um, just a cover, and and uh, um, and, and then it, I, I found out that I couldn't get it all in a cover, uh, cover, and it it sort of evolved into this uh, picture book. It sounds a little unusual. I think most people picture, for a book that has words, they think, well, a book has been written, and now we need to find an illustrator to make, some, make it look pretty. Uh, yeah. Here's the assignment. This is exciting, in a way, because it's a, a very back and forth process, a yes, very yeah. iterative it's, it's, process. It's, it's, a, it's, it's not typical for a lot of authors, but it is typical for an illustrator working with a client. Um, uh, which it, That's why illustration is a little different than, than art, because everything starts with the artist. Uh, an illustrator is, is working with uh, authors and editors and, and art directors, and um, uh, I've, I've done both. I've done art for, my, for its own sake, for, for just me, and I have also done um, illustration, a lot of illustration, and I, I find them both exciting and rewarding in their own ways. Talk a little bit about your uh, influences, if you will. I mean, I think people oh, look at your work yeah. and they see things that almost remind them of, if not childhood, earlier. Th it, there's a very comfortable but somewhat familiar feel about the the artwork that looks I have. Like. I have lots of influences and and, and uh, a lot of a lot of great minds to to credit. Um, uh, certainly, um, Dr. Seuss, Salvador Dali, um, uh, R. Crumb. Um, uh, I love uh, love surrealism and saw it as a a natural um, uh, a natural source of fun for for children's projects and and uh, Hieronymus Bosch is another one I don't want to forget <laughs> um, uh, great stuff very inspiring for me and and I've had a lot of fun with it. Talk a little bit about your your working methods. This is this is real art on paper, paint yes, on paper. Yes, Talk a little yeah. bit about the media, the yeah. how you work. Um, in, in my career as an illustrator, I'm a little, uh, little different than a lot of illustrators because until recently I didn't have a signature style. Basically, I talked to a client and um, they said, well, uh, this is what we'd like to do. Can you do this? And I would say, of course I can. Then I would teach myself to do it. But it was all uh, was before the, I got started before the age of, of computers and we're, we're talking about um, um, uh, you know, hands-on medium, traditional hands-on artist, artist methods. And, uh, it's, and over the years, it sort of synthesized into uh, a, a very traditional um, uh, method and medium uh, of, of uh, pencil and gouache. 
In this case, was, is it, was it a challenge to come up with illustrations that tell the whole story as opposed to, well, the words are going to set this up and explain what's going on and I'm just illustrating it. Was it a challenge from the art point of view to come up with telling the whole story in a... Well, in a I, I'm uh, usually, as an illustrator, I'm usually given text to work off of. Um, and uh, uh, very often the art directors will actually uh, uh, pick a scene or, or, or tell me what they want, and sometimes they don't. Um, but when I'm working out of my own sketchbook uh, for my, my own purposes, there is uh, a dialogue. Um, uh, sometimes it's visual, sometimes it's written. It's running in my head, and it doesn't need words. So, uh, and that's what happened with these two characters, uh, Yuck and Yum. I'm, I'm just looking at, at how they get on in the world and, and imagining their story unfolding. So all the words are in my head, and I hope that the words are in the, the head of, of the viewers, and they don't necessarily have to be the same words, which is the beauty of, of a wordless book. It's a different story for everybody. Dr. Ann Kuhn, writer and teacher, is Professor Emeritus in the College of Liberal Arts at Rochester Institute of Technology. Anne is the author of Ion Wisdom, the companion book and teaching guide for What's Up with Yuck. This project um, came to me uh, really unexpectedly and I think more than anything, first of all, I was just so inspired by Nanette's uh, passion for the project and her commitment to it. Um, it was also an opportunity to bring together uh, my experience as an educator and my work as a writer, and probably more than anything, the creative challenge of taking Nanette's concept, which had been already realized in the amazing illustrations by John Kastner, and bringing words to the project. Um, that, as I said, was just a challenge that I thought was a wonderful opportunity, and I was, I was happy to, to be part of it. When I first saw the book and I said, there are no words in this book. <laughs> the stories are all told with pictures. Uh, and then I heard there's some writing going on. I thought, well, what, how do you approach that challenge? If right. Here's a book that's realized in a wordless fashion, and right. you come along and say, I think we need some words around this. What exactly are you, are you writing? Well, I'm actually doing two things, two writing projects related to Yuck and Yum. The one is sample animation scripts um, so that somewhere down the road th there could be an animated, animated version of Yuck and Yum. Uh, those have been just great fun to work with because it has allowed me to step inside the world of John Kastner's illustrations and live among Yuck and Yum and their fellow characters imagining their personalities, um, inventing ways for them to talk with one another and respond to one another, and it's, it's, as I said, it's been enormously fun. The other thing that I'm writing, and this probably answers more directly your question about a wordless book, um, it's a companion book. And here, um, I'm really drawing on research that I've done over the years, particularly research in creativity and critical thinking. The book is, simply put, it's, um, it's a teaching guide. It's a teaching guide for adults to use to help children enjoy the book and to enjoy the book together with children. Um, and what it does is it encourages adults to find ways to ask questions with children, to encourage description, what do you see, what's going on, and then I think more more complexly, um, what's going to happen next? What do you think is going to happen next? So that children learn as they experience the book that there's more than just the surface level of, of, the, of the pictures themselves. I know Nanette has great hopes and visions for what will come of this. Do you have, have you developed your own uh, hopes for the future? Well, I certainly can imagine Yuck and Yum um, coming to life in a variety of media and for a variety of audiences. The message of the book is universal. It's, it stresses the importance of um, reflection, of thinking about the consequences of decisions that we make, of paying attention to things, um, and being responsible for what we are and, and how, we, how we live our lives. 
Blue Cease is Artistic Director and CEO of Rochester Contemporary Arts Center. He helped launch the book with a gallery exhibit, which featured original art from the book along with other paintings by John Kastner, as well as sculpture by Paul Knobloch. Blue, you showed uh, an interest in this artwork uh, even before it was a book. How did you get connected with this project? The fact that there was this evolving book project that Nanette is uh, working on and that John, of course, was illustrating um, made it that much more interesting. Um, it's not a typical approach for us uh, to display the prints uh, of a book, the plates of a book. Um, so that will be very interesting for us um, and a nice complement to the rest of the works in the exhibition. Um, the exhibition is called Other Worlds. And you know that just sort of you know came to us as a nice kind of summary of of course John's work. Um, I think you know every one of John's pages for this book and his other works, of course, um, really encapsulate a kind of a unique vision on the world, um, and in some cases create a whole world in each drawing. You know, as a small contemporary art center, the goal is often to surprise people. Um, to show work that uh, you know hasn't been shown uh, recently or hasn't been shown in the context that it is um, or perhaps is shown with a slightly different uh, twist um, and in this case uh, bringing uh, the the uh, the aspect of a you know a, a children slash adult book um, into the context of a contemporary art exhibition is very interesting um, but uh, ultimately, the, the the style of the works uh, will you know will bring everything together uh, in relation to the overall programming. And and there's a tradition I think in art of displaying this kind of work in gallery settings. I'm I'm thinking of well even New Yorker cartoons. There are galleries that hold shows of those. There are all kinds of illustrators you know, illustration illustrators of the past that have exhibited in galleries. Are all of the all of the illustrations on display? All of the illustrations that, that exist book. in the book? Yes, yes, the complete book will be on display and in, in a long running display on one wall. Um, and I think that will be nice to, you know, to show the whole narrative and, and someone could sort of step back and take in multiple pages at once. That's great, I think it's a great way to, it's another way to experience the book really. Is yeah, to, absolutely. You, you can come in and Walk, walk through it. Yeah, and I think you know an important part of this is to really show the public sort of what went into this. You know, um, not many people, uh, you know, the, the general you know gallery going public, um, maybe a little a little more informed. But I think that in general people aren't aren't necessarily clued into what goes into the making of a book. And this is in fact a very unique approach to making a book to start with the initial uh, original uh, drawings by John, um, and then work from there. Nanette's husband, Carl Wessendorf, supervised the technical process of creating the book. You've been involved with this project, obviously, uh, for a lot longer than just the digital files. You were around hearing Nanette talk about it when she came home from work, and you were there when you saw John Kastner's illustrations. So how do you feel about the project um, overall? Um, and, you know the content and the whole the whole idea. Oh well, it, it, it's just amazing to see something that I uh, say is always the best uh, 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 way to carry anything that is revolving around art is inspiration. Uh, the whole thing was from beginning to end has been around inspiration, uh, not perspiration. Not that not that they don't perspire to to uh, uh, doing the work, but the concept, the idea, the the flow. Uh, it, it, it's all been by inspiration, and uh, it certainly makes uh, uh, the result. Uh, it's a, it's a, it just has this this content, this 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 grab, this pop, this the seeming that it's perfect as it is, and um, <laughs> it's an amazing thing to see happen by inspiration. Uh, when Annette had the idea. I could tell how frustrated she was because she didn't know where to go with it. She's not an artist. I'm not an artist. And, uh, and then uh, uh, it, it, it struck through a, a few things from a past relationship with uh, uh, art that we purchased from John Kastner. And then a, a little tickler reminder of, of him still uh, out there and, uh, and uh, ready and willing to, to do work. And, and it hit us, it hit Nanette. 
And she was scared to tell me, I think. <laughs> she came back and said, here, this is yours, this is John's. I go, well, of course. How come, how come, how come I didn't think of that? that to, but uh, thank goodness she, she uh, thought of, of, of John Kastner's uh, style of work uh, and, um, and thought it would be a very good match. And thank goodness that's exactly what happened. He just, he just said, this is mine. <laughs> I've got it. Let's, and I'm going to go. And, uh, and he just hit and ran with it. Uh, it needed no, the, the, all the individual images needed no special direction. He just was as inspired to do this as Nanette was with the inspiration of the original idea. Pam Bregenzer, a friend of Nanette and Carl's, and a friend of Yuck and Yum, was one of the earliest supporters for the project. How did you discover this, this treasure? Uh, Carl and Nanette came to visit for the weekend and brought the mock-up of the book with them. And uh, it, was, it was so amazing because my initial reaction was, thank you so much for bringing back to me these wonderful characters of my childhood. Wait a minute, I don't know these characters, these are new characters. But I immediately felt this immense connection with these old friends that surely I have always known. And so for me it was just the, the immediate attraction and being drawn to them and finding them so interesting and lovable. So. And you're not just buying a book for a child, you're buying or you have intentions to buy lots of these books. I do. Why I so? Do. Why why so many books? How many um, books? Why so many? Well, I'm I, I'm buying 15 books and I'm spreading them around. I'm obviously giving them to my own grandchildren, who I which I only have two friends' grandchildren. Then I want to donate one. We've recently moved to Dansville. I want to donate one to the library there, the library in Whalen. Um, I'm from Shreveport, Louisiana, to the library uh, at in my hometown where my parents are, um, and and give the book to other friends' children. Uh, I think it's, the remarkable thing for me about this book is, with no words in it, it is so dear and so perfect. So you give a child a book that illustrates a message, but does not give that child the word for the message. So that child can actually tell you. So if I sit with my grandchildren and I say, we open the book and they look at me because you know what? They're expecting what? The adult to read the book to them. So I can say, you tell me what the book means. And I'm so excited to have the opportunity to spend that time with them and wonder what will their words be? What will they see on that page? What will that story mean to them and how can they express it back to me? So they get to engage with their imagination. Sure. And come up with their own version. And, and of course we all know as adults that anytime people look at something, they see it a little bit differently. So I'm very excited to see how my grandchildren will interpret this book. I, I think it'll be interesting. I, when, I've, when I read to children, you notice that after a while, they do, they want to read back to you. I mean, they <laughs> let me do it. And if it's a traditional picture book with words in it, they're usually guessing at the words and kind of following through. Mm -hmm. This does give them an opportunity to make those, make these stories their own. And here's what's happening and uh, learn by doing that. Absolutely. I absolutely think it's just going to be wonderful. As this book finds its way into more young hands and more people of all ages take its ideas about making good choices to heart, the story of What's Up With Yuck is only just beginning. Whether it's uh, doing, um, you know, uh, visits to schools, uh, whether it's getting local media attention, of course, all that takes a lot of time. And I'm just grateful that I know a lot of people in the community and I've talked to them about the book. And what's interesting is that practically every person I've talked to wants to help out, you know, in either a major way, like Ann Kuhn wants to to write for the book, or. Um, in a way that um, they want to distribute the books, buy books, like Pam Bergenzer is giving away books to libraries besides her grandchildren. It's, um, I, I'm fortunate, I think, that I have uh, blessed with a lot of friends who are willing to help out. To learn more about What's Up With Yuck and the story behind the book, visit whatsupwithyuck.com.